What's better than a great view of San Francisco? Flying out into it on a rope swing. Today, we are going to check out seven secret rope swing panoramas throughout the city. San Francisco is such an Instagram worthy city. The loads of hills make for great vistas in many neighborhoods. The views themselves are pretty jaw dropping, but there's been this crazy tradition where locals put up rope swings at some of these vistas so that as you swing out, it feels like you're flying into the cityscapes. It's pretty exhilarating. On top of that, it makes for great instas because it looks like you're swinging into the landscape. However, these spots are kind of ephemeral as they're not city sanctioned and the park services keep cutting them down due to liability issues. So it's always a hit or miss whether the swings will be there when you arrive. Lately, the city's been kind of aggro about it. Today, I thought I'd go scope some locations and hopefully come across a few intact. At a minimum, hey, there's a great view to enjoy. The first few we'll visit are in small neighborhood parks in the southeastern portion of San Francisco. You for sure will have to drive to these and they will be less touristy, although they will definitely still be well foot trafficked by locals. We're gonna start first with a swing at Bernal Heights Park. Got here just in prime time for dog walking. Oh my God, guys, check out this view. It is fantastic. I'm on top of the world. The weather is also cooperating today, no fog. There's a little power station at the top of this hill here and you can walk around the perimeter to get a 360 degree view. Here's a swing up here at the top. This swing is pretty well trafficked, so remember to share. Our next location is Billy Goat Hill, a small neighborhood park just down the way in neighboring Diamond Heights. There are two ways to approach this vantage point. Google Maps will take you down to Laidley Street, which borders the bottom of this park, and it requires a bit of work to get up here. With a bit of maneuvering, you could hit Beacon Street, which borders the top of the park, and that's a substantially smaller climb down. I must confess, I've never had good luck with this park. The city tends to enforce pretty stringently here. I read that these were up in February, and now look, they've been cut down. But hey, we can still enjoy the fantastic view. There's Bernal Heights Park, where we just were. Easy come, easy go, let's move on. In the neighboring community of Eureka Heights is Kite Hill Open Space. There's two ways to approach it. Stanton will dead end into the top of the park and you can approach it from the bottom off 19th. top you can see we're right under the shadow of Twin Peaks. There's an atoll up here where you can get a pretty straight shot of downtown all the way out there. It's a Twin Peaks view without the Twin Peaks traffic. So here's a swing up here which is going to take a little bit of gymnastics for me to get into so I don't think I'm going to try it but if you're nimble and you don't mind this danger sign taped around the tree go for it. Here is your view from the tree. Kind of nice and secluded. Two for one. Okay, one and a half since I didn't really get up there. Let's head on to our next destination. 
I'm gonna throw in a small bonus for the inner child in all of us. We're gonna take a quick detour to the Seward Slides in Seward Mini Park. It's just around the block from Kite Hill. There's kind of a cool story behind this park. Long ago, this used to be a vacant lot that was slated for development. The neighborhood fought for open space and were successful in turning this into a neighborhood park in 1973. And then they installed these slides as an art installation. Bring a good piece of cardboard for sliding. Up on the drive to Twin Peaks is Tank Hill Open Space, so named for this water tank that used to be situated right here and was taken out in the 1950s when this became a city space. Check out the view. You've got downtown and Golden Gate Bridge right back there. I have been all up and down this park and there is no swing in sight. So unfortunately, I'm gonna call this one a bust. Our next two locations are across the Golden Gate Bridge in Marin. We're headed for Kirby Cove. You wanna cross the Golden Gate Bridge, take an exit off Alexander and go towards Causalman where you'll find a small parking lot. And there's another smaller parking lot up near Battery Spencer, but that fills up pretty quickly. I've heard that they cut the swing down at this location, but let's go check it out just in case somebody put up a new one. Across from the lot, look for the trailhead for Kirby Cove. There's about a one mile hike inland, so get your walking shoes on. So we're here. What an amazing view and an amazing beach. The Golden Gate Bridge is so close, I can almost reach out and touch it. These two trees here is where I believe the swing used to be, but no more. And as you can see, nobody has restrung a new one up. So we're out of luck here too. Here's the view I think you would have gotten from here. Pretty spectacular. Or bring your own hammock, which will do just as well. Hope we have more luck at our next stop. About a 15 minute drive north of the Golden Gate Bridge Vista Point is the Hippie Swing in Tiburon. It's located in a very residential suburb. To find the trailhead here, you're gonna look for 90 Gilmartin and you're gonna park at this parking cutout right after that house. There's a short quarter mile hike to the top. Guys, look, success. Oh. You've got your choice of two swings, a single one, or the doubles. Both have an awesome view of the bay.
for our last stop, we're headed back into the city to Land's End, which is located in the western section of San Francisco. The swing is located near the Labyrinth Art Installation off of the Land's End Trail. The closest parking lot is the one at the USS San Francisco, although you can definitely park at the Land's End Visitor Center. By the way, there's still a good three quarter to a mile walk in. And there's a bit of a descent to the beach, which is going to bite you in the ass on the way back up. And there's the labyrinth down below. Okay, we're supposed to go up the hill behind the labyrinth. Let's see if we can find it. Well, the path dead ends into this tree here, which is not quite the tree with a rope swing on it. And the path does not go down towards the rocky cove per the instructions. So we'll keep looking. I'm gonna check down on the beach around there and in the trees over there, see if we can't find it. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit sketched back behind here. Wait, is that an armchair? Yeah, I don't think this is the right way either. All right, guys, so after about an hour searching, I had no success. So I would say that was a major bust. But overall, out of the seven, we found three intact and two were actually swingable. So in my books, the day was a big success. All right, I'm gonna head back now, take my punishment on these steps up here. If you tried it, let me know how you did and send me some awesome pics. Thanks for exploring with me today on this epic adventure. And until the next time, peace out.